Today on The Joy of Editing, this is a Photoshop tutorial. I'll be using the Style Transfer Neural Filter to create a painterly type image. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Thank you for joining me this Wednesday. This is going to be a painterly type image. I felt like getting a little creative today. We're going to stay right here in Photoshop. We're going to use a style transfer neural filter, which is similar to the AI remix uh, filters in Topaz Studio 2. I chose this image because it has a fairly clean background, and I think I could take advantage of some of the effects with the style transfer neural filter, but we'll find out here shortly. Let's get started. The first thing we need to do is come up to filter and look for neural filters. Click on neural filters and that'll launch neural filters. Now you don't have to duplicate your background layer because the neural filter can do that for you. We have all these different neural filters and what you want to look for is the one that says style transfer and just click the toggle button right here and that turns it on. And notice we have artist styles and image styles here. So we have two different types we could use. And then down here on output, you have options here. This is a drop down. I'm using new layer. Remember when I said you don't have to duplicate your background layer because this will output your result to a new layer in Photoshop. But if you click the drop down, you have choices here. You can use put it on the current layer, uh, a new layer, a new layer with a mask, a smart filter, or a new document. Now, smart filter is not a bad choice if you need to go back in there and change things, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave mine on new layer, but you do have that option as well. I also want to point out where I showed you the artist styles and the image styles. Those are under presets, but you do also have custom. Now, if I click on custom, you can select an image. You can import your own painterly type images and transfer those styles onto other images for a more painterly effect. And you can click select an image and then select an image from your computer. I already have some saved in a folder that I've designated for style transfer. So I'll click this button right here for the folder. And you can see I right now I have four different painterly type images in here. These are ones that I made from Firefly. So pretty cool stuff, right? So I can also use these, which is nice. For instance, if I wanted to use this one right here, I'd click it and click use this image. And we'll start out with this one. We'll demonstrate this one first. And you can see it's processing on device. I don't know if you saw that right down there. And now there is the style transfer onto this bird image, right? Now you'll notice the style opacity right now is way up high to 100%. The strength defaults at like 20%. And what I'd like to do really to start out is take the strength up to 100% as well as the style opacity just to see what kind of overall effect I'm going to get with full strength on everything. And it looks like that. And so then what I might do is pull back on the style opacity is somewhere right around like 50% to start with and see what I get. And I do like that. That's looking pretty cool. And then I might feel the strength is too high. So now I may pull the strength back. Let's try 50% and see. See right there, that looks pretty good. Now that is the color of this image transferred onto this image. But if I want to preserve the original color, look right here, we have this little checkbox. Click this and now we preserve the original color. And right there, that looks pretty darn nice. I really like that. And then I can continue to play with the style opacity. You know, maybe increase it a little bit and that's too much. I was at 50, so let me go a little less of 50. Okay, something like that, and I think I did like it at 50, so 50 on that, and maybe I'll decrease the strength a little bit to see if I like that effect better. And yeah, that looks pretty cool, or I could increase it. And now I could come, now that I have these settings here, I could come and click on this file folder again, and now let's choose a different image. Let's try this B pencil drawing and click use this image and see what kind of an effect we get with this one at these particular settings. Okay, so that looks pretty cool. And if I shut off preserve color, you can see there's what this color would look like on here, right like that, and I don't like that so much, but I could also, You'll notice I do have a saturation adjustment. I could pull that back if I felt that saturation was too strong to something like that. I'm not really a fan of that. Let me double click this and go back and click on preserve color. Now we also have a brightness adjustment. 
You could make this image lighter or darker depending on what you want. You can also blur out the background. So if you take this background blur and you start to move this to the right, you'll notice the background will start to blur, but the subject will stay in focus. I don't generally use that, but it's something that you could play around with. And then we have detail. Right now we're at 100% detail. You could start to pull back on the detail and get rid of some of the detail, which you could get some nice effects here. So I really encourage you to play with the different sliders. For now, I'm going to keep this detail maybe somewhere. And let's take it back up the whole way because I'm not done experimenting. So I showed you custom, right? Now let's go back to presets. But don't forget about custom and importing your own painterly type images in there for style transfers. That opens up tons of possibilities. Now we couldn't do that in Topaz Studio 2, but we can do it in Photoshop, which is really nice. And now that I'm back in presets, we can play around with some of these presets here. I'm gonna leave my settings where I had them. Let's try this one down here. This is more of an artistic style, so let's see what we get. This process takes about six seconds, but I won't make you wait that long. And that looks pretty cool. And I do like this a lot. Now, don't forget, this is where you have to really start to play around and experiment. You know, maybe pull up your strength, see what kind of result you get. And maybe pull up your opacity and see what kind of result you get. Now, it's too much, so maybe I'll pull back on the opacity. Now, right there, I think I got a great image. Now, I have preserved color on, so... Let me uncheck this and see what it looks like with the image color. And that's not bad, right? That looks pretty nice. I do like that color, so I might want to use that. But for now, I'm going to put preserve color back on. Okay, so that's one. But you have all these different possibilities, and I don't want to waste all your time. But I recommend get in here and experiment and play around and have some fun. And now let's go into image styles. And you'll notice there's quite a bit more image styles than there are artist styles. I believe you have 10 artist styles. And again, a lot more of the image styles, as you can see. But don't forget, you can import your own artist and image styles, which really is nice. But I ended up settling on this one right here. But again, you got to experiment. Click on the different ones and see what kind of results you get. And I had a lot of nice results with different ones here. But I ended up settling on this one right here. I'll click on this one and let's see what kind of a result we get. Now, that looks really nice with these settings. Now, if you want to see a before and after, you can click this button right here. You can see there's your before. Just left click it, release, and then left click it again, and you go back to after. So again, before and after. So that's a nice little button just to see what's happening. And now it's time to play around. Let's uh, shut off preserve color first just to see what the style transfer color looks like and yeah it's okay it's not bad it's way too strong let me pull back in the saturation just to see eh, that's not really bad it's 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 okay but i'm not 100 percent feeling it what do you think i don't know i'm not feeling it now by the way to reset any slider you can either double click on the circle of the slider it'll reset it or the other thing you can do is double click on the name of the slider and it will reset it if you want to reset all your sliders, you can come up here and click this button and it'll, it'll reset everything, okay? So now we've lost everything. <laughs> so let's go back to image styles and let me go ahead and click on this preset right here. Now we're back to this preset's default slider settings. So the first thing I'm going to do is check on preserve color to get my color back. The strength, I think I need to increase, but first off, my opacity is too high. So I'm going to start to pull back on the opacity. And yeah, that's looking better. That's at 58. Let me take it back a little bit more. I'm going to take it back here. This is where I ended up settling on when I did my first experiments for this tutorial at 40. But now I think I need more strength. So let's take the strength up and let's move it over to like, say halfway. Let's go to 50. Yeah. And I do like that strength right there. And then of course, if we have too much saturation, we can pull back in the saturation a little bit if we think we need to tone it down a little bit. And I, that's too much, I think, but I might tone it down just a little bit to maybe, maybe like right here, like at a minus nine. I do like that. And if I wanted to, you know, we could experiment with blurring out that background a little bit. Let's see if that helps. You know, we could blur that a little bit, but I'm not 100% on that. I don't think so. I'm just going to take it back to the left and not blur it. And we could reduce some of the detail of this image by taking this detail slider, 
Let's pull it back a little bit and see what we get here. Yeah, see, it makes it a little softer looking, you know, and I think, I think I'd like that. Maybe I'll give it a little bit more detail. Maybe something like right about here looks pretty good. And I'm pretty happy with this right here. Now, if you want to, if you're satisfied with your results, you can let Photoshop know by clicking the little yes with a little happy face. Or if you don't like your results, click no with a sad face and say, I'm not happy, Photoshop. Make this product better. But I like it. I think it does a really nice job. And I'm really excited about the fact we can add our own custom images into it. And now at this point, if I'm happy, I have the output set to new layer. And again, if you want this to be a smart object, you can click on smart filter. But I'm going to leave it on new layer because I don't think I'm going to come back and change anything. But if you thought you might, you weren't 100% sure, you may want to use smart filter. I'm going to click OK and that'll send us back into Photoshop. And here we are in Photoshop. And I really like this. If I shut this layer off, we started out here and now we end up here. A nice painterly image. I really like it. The only thing I don't like is like under this tree limb, you see some of these light areas under here. I'm going to fix that and I'm going to grab the new remove tool in Photoshop. And what I'll do is add a new blank layer on top so I don't paint on this layer by clicking this button right here. And I have sample all layers on and remove after each stroke. And with a smaller brush, I'm just going to come along and paint along this edge here just like that. See, just clean that up a little bit. I don't like that there. So you can repaint over things if you need to. And I think I'll paint in here, see if I can get rid of this little white area. Yeah, that looks better. And I'm going to come in here, paint down into here. I like that. And I'm going to paint in here. I'm going a little jaggedy and I think that helps it a little bit. I'm not sure, but it seems to right like that. And I still have a little white line right here. So we got rid of that. There's a little bit of white in here. Let me, well, I still see some white. I'll get rid of that. That looks better. Yeah, there's a little bit of white over here. We can paint along this, see if I can clean that up. And right here, that looks good. Maybe right here. Okay, and then right up into here. There's still a little bit of white in here. Let me paint across there. And there one time, it helps to whisper here, as Bob Ross would always say when he's painting. Whispering is good, you know? But I like it. What do you think? Let me shut off this layer where I did this little cleanup. I'll shut it off. See, there's before and there's after. And I think that really helps. Now, if you want to see the overall before and after, hold your Alt or Option key down and click on this background layer eyeball. There's before. And then hold that Alt or Option key down again and click it again. Now, if you have the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, you can click this before after button on either the combo or CX panel to see a before and after. And overall, I'm really happy with the way this came out. I think it has a nice painterly look. Well, there it is. That was Photoshop's Style Transfer Neural Filter. If you want to turn an image into a painterly type image, give this filter a try. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon, click all so that you'll receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.